When you lost, I'll be the stranger in the taxi driver The flashing lights, the night's on fire The truth shall set you free <laughs> <laughs> That's a powerful opening yeah, I'm like, you know, you never know how you're going to look with, you know, cameras like this. You'd be like, oh. you know, I haven't looked myself in the mirror the whole day. Ah. <laughs> you look lovely. You look lovely. Oh, um, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm so hyped right now. The energy in me is like, like a, a Duracell rabbit, like, like that. I don't know. It's because if it was because of the show that I had in Gran Canaria the other day, which was, yeah. you know, the drag race show, which was crazy. I don't know what it is, or if it's just this coffee. I'm not sure. You're you're just running on a lot of energy. It's amazing. Um, yeah. Well, and then in a, in a couple of minutes, I'll be like, mm. <laughs> I'll ask my questions quick. <laughs> no, don't worry about it. Um, so, I mean, you're very excited and you have heard Tattoo. We've not heard Tattoo yet and we are no. so excited to hear it. So, I mean, can you tell me a little bit about the vibe of the song, the mood? The mood is, it has, it, it's a bit mysterious. It's mysterious and powerful at, at the same time. And when I say powerful, it has these dynamics that I love I call them the Lorraine dynamics you know where like you know you're in this mystical small room and then all of a sudden you build up to this stuff yeah. or like you know that's the my favorite dynamics yeah, you know when it comes, yeah yeah because I think we all have a little bit of that you know yeah. in us you know the unseen the unknown or whatever yeah, and I think your performances always really pack in a kind of artistic visual also, whether it be movement or costuming um, or lighting. Mm. Have you given a, a kind of a lot of thought to how Tattoo is going to look? Yeah, because, you know, it, it starts, it, okay, it starts with the song, but the thing that happens when, when I hear music is that I see things in pictures. Yeah. So the, the the moment I heard tattoo, I just saw, I just saw the scene. Like this is the scenery, this is the vibe, this is the color, this is the narrative, and then from there I start to build. If I don't see a visual in front of me, like a picture, when I hear a song, the song is not for me. Yeah. You know, it's not a match. You know. <laughs> yeah. So I, I yeah. So I give I give the visual part a lot of energy because I feel it it enhances the music it's like you know it just gives it a a face yeah like, it's an added dimension yeah it does really so it, it is in all of my performances especially in this forum it's really important and I, I control a lot of it with my creative team. Like, you know, it's not just like, oh, a picture there and a picture there and a picture there and bang, 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 bang. Like, you know, <laughs> it needs to be, it needs to be precise. What are we yeah. saying? Why are we moving? And how are we supposed to move? Like, same goes with euphoria, really. So, yeah. yeah. Cinematic quality, I think, as well, isn't it? It's, it's what was not, that? It's a really kind of cinematic quality as well. Yeah, yeah. exactly, exactly. So you have collaborated with like the dream team of writers on the song. Yeah. Like, yeah. was there a moment where you were like, wow, like there's there's so many like gifted people in this room when you were writing it? Yeah, well, you know what? It started with them writing an embryo and then they sent me the demo and, but they wrote it. I mean, thinking about all the, the things that I stand for basically and that I like and so when they sent me the demo it hit me and then I'm like I need to cut this song it's because it's mine and so I went into the studio and I did some hard work on it you know because yeah. otherwise you know the, you need to you know you need to take a song and you need to really make it yours so you know yeah. kill it if it needs to be killed change it you know so that yeah. you know the Lorene touch on it. Yes, you can tell. You can say that. <laughs> oh, you will hear it. <laughs> so 
was this always like a melody festival and song or was it just a kind of standalone single that you thought oh this this would work for Melfest or you know what was your kind of decision for coming back? Mm, no you know it for me I didn't have the Melfest in mind at all because it, it wasn't mentioned you know it was just like it was uh, Thomas Gerson sending me the song late one evening and I'm like Oh, it's interesting, you know, and 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 I and I heard it and I fell in love, but there was still no and I, but I could, I to be honest, I was like he sent me this song and he just told me like, what do you think? Yeah. And I'm like, I could feel. First of all, I fell in love, and then I felt like mm, there's something in the making here. There's something I'm supposed to do with this song, and then weeks later, the question came like, could you possibly be interested in being in the Melfis? I'm like, no. <laughs> yes <laughs> so, you know <laughs> but I you know it came much later and it was a, a no 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 because I needed time to really like land and like what am I am I gonna do this or do I want to do this like I'm a really slow person <laughs> <laughs> so it was like no no and I said no to everybody in my team they're like okay if it's no it's no and you know that it was literally this when they were like, okay, we understand, Lorraine, we understand that you don't want to do this. We get it. Um, so it's a no. We're going to tell everybody it's a no. And that moment when they said, we're going to tell everybody it's a no, I just felt in my whole body, it's a yes. So I, I must have confused my team a lot. Because <laughs> at that moment, you know, when they were supposed to call the the, 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 the TV show and like, I'm sorry, but she's not going to, She she it's <laughs> not, she's not. I just felt like it's always been a yes. And this just been a pro this was just a process for me. Like, no, wait, give me time, give me time, give me time. It's a yes. So it was crazy. They're like, you're crazy. Did you just <laughs> you, you've said no for so long and now all of a sudden it's a big yes? Yeah. Well, <laughs> they, they must be punishing you because they've put you in the last semi-final in the last song. Um yeah. does does that make it harder for you to come back? Because you're thinking, okay. I need to sit, sit through four semifinals and then it's my turn? Or do you just kind of get to enjoy it? And... Yeah, well, you know what? I, to be honest, like I have, I have, for me, I, 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 the performance is so important, whether it is in the semifinal, wherever it is. So, I, I mean, so with that, what do I want to say with that? What I meant was that, um, I have I put a lot of pressure on myself to create something that I can stand for and that hopefully you guys will like and it doesn't matter if it's a small show if it's a big show whatever it is so so um I don't mind like I wouldn't I don't care whether they put me first in the middle or wherever what I do care about and what I'm very keen about is that it needs to be uh, perfect I would say like according to to the vision because it's energy like and usually I'm like I want I hope that I get the audience to feel this so that's how I think like I need them to feel this by the end of this if they can feel this then I made it like, like you know <laughs> so so yeah I don't feel pressure being last or like oh yeah. I need to, you know I just feel I really I work I work really hard to create something that like one hell of a show yeah well, can i ask what what do you want the audience to feel is there an emotion that you really hope that people pick up or do you want them to kind yeah. of take their personal you know attachment yeah. to the song yeah there are two things two, even three things and because uh, you know it's just a reflection of i guess what's going on in myself and i think collectively it, it goes on in a lot of us like if you look at the world today like is there some crazy things going on we've been through covid we've been through like we're in the middle of an inflation is that how you say it in english yeah like yeah yeah and you know and and with environmental issues going on there's a lot like it, it things are going so fast and for me i just feel like i want people first of all to feel that hope hope is a really important thing and i know it sounds corny but really it's about a perspective and so 
sometimes media and propaganda, they, they, you know, it's a lot of negative energy going on. And, you know, we have to see through that and see that there's so many beautiful things also at the same time moving. So the glass is either half empty or half full. So hope is really important, like, you know. And another thing that is important is strength. You know, the own your own strength. I mean, if we only understood how powerful we can be, everything would be so easy. But, you know, so that's another thing. I want to present strength within us all. And the third thing is, it sounds corny, but nature. Okay. And the reason why I say nature is because that's where we get all the energy. We're like small batteries and we walk around, you know, in cities, we eat from each other, but sometimes we just need to respect and reconnect with nature. Yeah. And, you know, it's so important. That's where we heal. You know, you can go to a therapist. Good. I recommend that because I love going to therapists, but, <laughs> and talk. <laughs> But sometimes, you know, if you if you if you combine that with really being in raw nature, yeah, I'm not talking the park. I'm talking raw nature. Call me afterwards and tell me what you feel. <laughs> I'm excited. So, mm. yeah, you, you you're taking a lot of boxes. Yeah, um, <laughs> I need to. This is just me being selfish here because I am obsessed with neon lights. I think it is oh. like the best song of last year and just loved it. Um, and you just talked to me a little bit about that. Tell me anything about Neon Lights because I just, I love it. I love it. Yeah, you know, Neon Lights was like, you know, in terms of storyboard, I mean, it's very spiritual, Neon Lights, you know. It's about, it's about support, basically. It's about believing in something else than, I mean, not something else, but you have your senses and you can see things, you can smell things, but there's also one thing called intuition. I was yeah and so it's about it was just a, I would call it a support song where you know I say that when you're lost I'll be the stranger like when I say stranger I'll be the I'll be the stranger I'll be the taxi driver I can be anyone it, you know love comes in such different it comes from different angles and different ways like it could be an energy whatever and so we had just have to be open uh about it so it's basically i wouldn't say god but it's just something protective and like you know that's a story like something is protecting us you know we should really like if we open our senses we, we will feel that's the spiritual part of me like but in terms of production you know i like i like electronic stuff like i, I like it when it's hardcore and i yeah. just like to play around with what's male and female and just mash it all up to a crazy sexy vibe like so right. so I usually do that. I take spiritual things and I and and I package it I package it in in a in a yeah what I feel is is exciting like it could be a production or an, I like heavy beats obviously and I like dramatic stuff like cinematic stuff like so so neon lights is a spiritual song but it's in this context of badass like a kill bill vibe. Yeah. <laughs> I think but if you look at like, you know, your your back catalogue of, of hits and heal and you know, ride and, and, and these amazing albums, you really see that kind of interweaving of these kind of like really human elements with like kind of cool, like sexy, harsh electronic sounds as well. So it's a real yeah, it, you do it well. You do it well. Yeah, thank you, darling. I love that. It's exciting just to mix everything up a bit. And it's like, you know, there are no rules when it comes to creativity or anything, to be honest. Like, you know, there are the basic rules, like don't kill each other, don't do blah, blah, blah. But apart from that, I would say like, you know, just, you know, create. Because yeah. we create stuff, like, you know, mix it up. Yeah. Do whatever you feel like, you know. Rip up the real book. Yeah, duh, yeah, you know. Um, it's, it's so, you know, we need to also kind of pay some love to some mellow classics from Lorraine. So My Heart yeah. is Refusing Me, Statements, yeah. Euphoria, yeah. All, yeah. all great songs. How do you kind of look back on these songs? Is there a sort of nostalgia attached to them or are you kind of quite good at detaching from a song once it's out in the world? Oh, I will never be able to de detach myself from songs. Like, it's like, because it's an, I, there is no separation when it comes to the things that I create in me because it's me. I mean, it was an old me, of course, but it was, 
it's still a part of me, like euphoria. I've never, because it symbolizes so many good things. It symbolizes intuition. Like euphoria was actually the first song where I said like, you know what? I'm just going to do me. And, and if it works, it works. I was shitless scared. I'm like, oh yeah, whatever. Nobody likes, nobody believes in this, but I believe in it. That's the most important thing. And I did it. And so when I won, it was like universe telling me like, see what I mean? Yeah. This is how it goes when you follow your intuition. So euphoria in my spirit is a symbol of that. So whenever I hear it and whenever I hear people sing it, it just creates this really happy feeling in me. Like, yeah, I remember. Mm -hmm. My Heart is Refusing Me. That was the first song I wrote, not completely by myself, but it was me. But I was not ready for the stage when, it, when you know, I was just half ready. So um, I remember seeing the performance. I mean, like, I look. statement because i was th I, I just felt like the world is starting to get segregated so it, that one came out of a frustration was a shaguara like you know oh, we need to we need to open our minds up and our eyes like what are we doing there is no you know we cannot go back to the second world war and be like hey we're too smart for that <laughs> so that was like yeah so yeah i don't know if that answered your question darling yeah, but i'm just does, like i'm does. just yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think it, so, it's, it's that kind of idea of a part of you being an exclusive song, isn't it? And whether it may not be you at the moment, but it was you. And, you know, yeah, you, like, yeah. like a photograph, I guess, it, in a sense, like a musical. Yeah, really like that. It, it's, a, it's always a reflection of some sort of state of mind. I mean, I think everybody, every creator, when they create, I mean, I've never seen, it, it has to be. A reflection of something going on maybe if it's only just for a while it still is like even watching something and painting it it still goes through your filter and then it comes out you know so so and you know i think as a human race we are the creators like what do we do as human beings we we build things and we uh unbuild them i was gonna say if we just That's we less good <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, that's what we do. So uh, we create something out of nothing. Um, going back to Euphoria, because, it, you know, it, it is it, a real turning point for Eurovision. And, you know, it, I, for me, it signals a kind of the modernization of the contest and really bringing it forward into, you know, high art um, as well as kind of pop. It combines these worlds. Mm -hmm. Did you mm -hmm. have any idea of the impact it would have on the Eurovision fans and the, the contest in itself no I, I to be honest I didn't I just knew I remember that I there was one thought that I had in mind I I wanted so badly because for me euphoria when I created it it was just like I looked at the Melody Festival context here in Sweden at the time and I was like they had all these rules and these ideas of what people would like and would feel. And I just felt like when I heard the conversation, I, I it, it was almost like they were like, you know what? People don't understand music and they don't understand what things are real. So let's not make it real. Just like give them what they want. Blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, okay. So for me, my focus was that I was so convinced that if, you create something that is real it will you know because it's such a powerful energy and it will connect with people so my i didn't think it was going to be that big to be honest i didn't think at all when it came to that my focus was again like i want people to feel this and i'm going to prove all these other people wrong that people will understand what authenticity is they will feel it because it's like telling a lie and not telling a lie. You feel it like, dude, you're lying. Or you know what? You're you're telling the truth now, you know? So it's, and I was right, yeah. obviously, you know, don't, I'm a people's person. Like, you know, I like, I'm power to the people type of person. Like, don't think that people are fucking stupid because we are the people, <laughs> okay? So, yeah. You got the power. I didn't. We got the power, really, like, yeah. you know, collectively, yeah. 
people understand, they feel we're all connected. So how can you separate yourself from, you know? Um, it sounds like over your time in the music industry, you could have some good advice for yourself. Um, you know, you mentioned kind of mm. saying my heart is refusing me and maybe not being ready for mm. for that kind mm. of world. Um, mm. What would you say, you know, to young Lorene, um, mm. to give her that kind of confidence and the, the kind of wisdom that you maybe have now? Yeah, I, I think I would say that, first of all, um, it's a it's it's a it's a process like everything happens in 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 its right time like you don't have to rush i would say that to my young self like you know um just just trust the process first of all the second thing i would say is you know what um i would say Lorraine, do you know when 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 whatever you're creating it becomes the best thing ever it's when you don't give a fuck and have fun. Like, do you understand what I mean? Like, you know, when you're in that energy, like you're just playful. It's like a yeah. playful baby energy. And all of a sudden you can you can feel like something is happening. And you understand, like, you know, you never have access to creativity when there are rules and regulations of you cannot do this or this is right and this is wrong, blah, blah, blah. If I could have told myself that you know what as long as you have fun it would it will be great yeah because with euphoria you see the thing that i did was like because they wanted me to be in this contest again again and i said no again i said no and i said on one condition you're not allowed to see anything until it's finished and so i was a kid playing around until yeah. it was finished you know, so, That's amazing. so that is advice. Yeah, it's an, and I would I I tell that to everybody like and that's why I'm so goofy because at the end of the day like I can be stiff and be like oh you know what my brand <laughs> like you know, so, <laughs> no, it's not worth it. I love it. I love it. Um, <laughs> so whenever I do these interviews, I always it's a bit of a token question, but I have to ask like people's Eurovision favorites. And without fail, whether it's a Norwegian singer, a Latvian singer, French singer, it always comes back to you. So I would love to know but what who are your Eurovision favorites? Oh my God. Like I I have different favorites depending on mood. Like you know, I, I love Conchita on a personal level as a human being also. I love the song, you know. But you know, she's she's a Scorpio. Uh, you know, an amazing human being i love her like every time we meet we'll be like ah! you can stop we're like we don't there's not even a joke in the air like we're just laughing you know? yeah, <laughs> like, so i yeah really good vibrations and uh but you know abba is also favorite like you know there are times when i'll be like can somebody put on waterloo come on put on waterloo <laughs> <laughs> yeah and i do love um oh, there are many songs that i love i love uh I love Monso, so we are the heroes of our time. Oh, that melody is just like, it just hits me straight to the heart. Like, I love that one. And also because we've known each other for a very long time. But I have fav a lot of favorites. Let me send you a list on all my favorites. Oh, make a playlist. Yeah, please. <laughs> um, we also, we, ha we have to love Mons because he's become like a face of um, Eurovision this year because obviously, you know, the UK are hosting on behalf of Ukraine and it's our job to make it as kind of special and eventful and a celebration of Ukrainian culture and music. Um, mm -hmm. Have you kind of visited the UK before? Do you have any experience of, of the UK? Of the UK? Are you yeah. kidding me, man? I, yeah, I've been in the UK a lot. First of all, y'all guys have a lot of good, good songwriters. That's one thing. The second thing is like great hotels, I was going to say. <laughs> no, I've been there a lot, a lot, both for work, working with creative people. Like it's like it's I usually say that. I think that the UK, London, or let's say UK, it's like a creative hub there they create trends and then the trends move on. I mean, if you look at Adele, you look at Amy Winehouse, all these amazing artists. I mean, it's almost like they were created in the UK and then they went out and inspired the world. Like, and then the rest comes like, you know, we need to do it as Adele or we need to do it as, you know, it's yeah. like, there's a lot of like 
really cool artists coming from the UK. I don't know like why what, what you guys are doing, but uh, you guys are doing something. It's the water. It's all the water. Um, <laughs> it's all the water. Uh, we need to get you some shows here. That would be amazing. Some UK shows. That would be yeah. such a delight. Um, I, I would oh, love to wrap be a up. Dream come true. Um, I, I would love to kind of wrap up with some just quick fire questions. Um, first thing that pops into your head, no right or wrong answer. Um, yeah. So, but before so, you do, can I say oh, one thing? Yes, please do. I think you have an amazing energy. Oh, thank I you. I just have to say it. Like, really, really nice vibrations coming from you. Oh, that is that's so kind of you to say that. That means a lot. Yeah, yeah. It's almost like we've known each other in a past life or something. Because I'm well, not usually like this. I'm more of a stiff person. Well, we're both Libras. I know that. <laughs> that's why. It's Libra energy. It is Libra energy. It's harmony. Yeah. That's why I'm like, oh, yes. this is very soft and and very like soft and and uh, yeah, humble. Uh, yeah, it's very. I just wanted to say that. Oh, it just well, popped. It, it was there so in my sweet. head, and I like. Yeah. Made my day. Yeah. Um, <laughs> ooh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, the last song you listened to. Uh, wait, 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 wait. The last song I listened to. Uh, um, wait, wait. Um, the last song I listened to was it was many songs. It was actually Rihanna's medley on the oh, uh, the the yeah. Super Bowl. Flawless. <laughs> oh, it and was so beautiful. How she could be pregnant and be that high that terrifies me. But oh, that's why she's I mean, Rihanna. Look, she's She's a power woman. I said, I love her. Oh yes. God! Like you know, see what I like. You know, it's all about mindset. Um, next one, banger or ballad? What was that? Banger or a ballad? Banger or a ballad? Banger, yeah. I would say a banger, 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 banger. Um, your biggest fear? My biggest fear is to be controlled by fear. Mm. Um, your top travel destination? Um, right now, I just okay. The top. Oh, uh, that's Iceland, or the uh, or or wait a minute, I want to go to Svalbard. You mean places that I haven't been in? Um, anywhere, anywhere you'd like to go. Anywhere, I'll, okay. In that case, I would like either Greenland or Svalbard. Okay. Um, your meet up with some with, meet up with some beers, and you know. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the usual. <laughs> your your favorite animal? Oh, oh, I have so many, but I have a dog, so I have a Jack Russell. So I would say dogs. Oh, they're amazing dogs. Like animals in general. Yeah, they're more aware than we than we think. And I think it's a sign of a good person. You know, if someone likes animals, they're a good person. Usually, that's yeah, making yeah. a too. Um, yeah, most definitely. Your favorite movie or film? Oh, my favorite movie or film. My favorite movie. Wait, I have so many. Um, I, I'm a Tarantino fan. So everything okay. that Tarantino does, except for the really, really aggressive ones, like, but I would say Kill Bill is really nice. Yeah. Um, I just love his his way of making films. It's so exciting. And it's crazy also. I'd be like, what are you doing? But I'm also a hopeless romantic person so i like forrest gump and move, like really classical movies like that um no oh, green man is really sad so please no no i like him <laughs> but no i could only watch it one time because yeah. it didn't have a positive ending everything that has positive endings you see me watch it okay. romantic comedies <laughs> uh, well <laughs> thank you so much it's honestly been such a delight chatting to you and you're just wonderful so Good luck oh, for right, uh, right, for right. Melfest. Oh, um, and I'll hopefully see you in <laughs> person you. in Liverpool. Fingers crossed. Ah, uh, fingers crossed. I'll do my best, man. I'll do my best. <laughs> and, and a big thank you to Nicholas as well for for organizing this. No, don't worry. I'll tell him that. I'll tell him like you fired. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Like, what did I do? No, take well, care, it, enjoy <laughs> your evening. <laughs> bye bye. I will. Bye bye, darling. Bye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going up, 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 up. You
Oh, oh, oh.